All right, so this really will be a uh, week six quiz review. This review comes from uh, ACE Physics Syllabus Code 9702, paper 23, May, June, 2013. And so it starts, state the principle of conservation of momentum. This is where we've talked about just sort of making sure that you've got your definitions memorized, that you've got like all the key definitions um, Newton's laws, you know, conservation of momentum, certain things that you're just going to kind of need to have committed to memory. I prefer this definition, but there's an equivalent definition we mentioned a moment ago. For a closed system in any direction, the total momentum of the objects before the collision is equal to the total momentum of the objects after the collision. So that is a statement of the principle of conservation of momentum. The other thing that you might have said there was within a closed system, the total momentum in any direction is constant. Note that both capture that idea in any direction. How we talked about yesterday. The question goes on to ask, state the difference between an elastic and an inelastic collision. Here you probably could say something like, for an elastic collision, the relative speed of approach equals the relative speed of separation. That's true. That is a consequence of the fact that the kinetic energy is conserved in elastic collisions. Okay, so I prefer to kind of, by definition, a collision is perfectly elastic when there is no kinetic energy lost when that quantity is conserved. In all collisions, momentum is conserved, but if kinetic energy is also conserved, then it's a perfectly elastic collision. Sometimes it's more um, helpful or useful to just think about the relative speed of approach and separation. Okay, and that's the idea that's sort of spelled out on the other chalkboard, but there's also a whole YouTube video where I kind of go through the explanation of what those equations mean. So I, I would suggest watching that rather than trying to make, just make sense of the symbols on the chalkboard. All right, this one goes on to say an object A of mass 4.2 kilograms and horizontal velocity 3.6 meters per second moves towards object B as shown in figure 3.1. Object B of mass 1.5 kilograms is moving with a horizontal velocity of 1.2 meters per second towards object A. The objects collide and then both move to the right as shown in the figure uh, 3.2. The question here is asking, to calculate the velocity V of object A after the collision. Okay, so how fast would object A be going after these two collide? Now we saw in a previous question, there's all sorts of combinations of how these velocities might sort of um, wind up that will still conserve momentum. We would have to be given the velocity of the other object in order to solve this, right? Because there's like almost infinitely many combinations of velocities these things could have that would still conserve momentum. So to solve for one of them, we kind of have to know everything else. I approach the calculation like this. I know that I'm using momentum conservation here. I can't really use the idea of relative speed of approach and separation because they haven't told me if this collision is, is perfectly elastic or not. And in fact, that's what we're going to have to determine with our final question here. But momentum is always conserved in every collision. And so I'm going to use that. So the initial momentum is the sum of the individual momenta of all the objects. So object A here has a mass of 4.2, and I'm calling to the right positive. So positive 3.6 is its velocity. I add this initial momentum. So 1.5 kilograms traveling at a velocity of negative 1.2. It's really important to keep track of your sign convention here. So the momentum of object A is 15.12. The initial momentum of object B is negative 1.8. And so the, the sum there, the total momentum before is 13.32. On the right side of this equation, I have the final momentum. The 4.2 kilogram object traveling at some speed B that I want to solve for. And the other object traveling at three meters per second, it's 1.5 kilograms still. And they're both going to the right, which means they're both positive. Then you have like just a perfectly solvable algebraic statement. So I subtract 4.5 kilogram meters per second from both sides. I kind of show that there and I ran out of room. So I jumped over here. So 13.32 minus 4.5 is 8.82. 
and it still equals 4.2 V, dividing each side by 4.2, I can deduce that this value V is 2.1 meters per second. All right, that's just using the law of conservation of momentum that you hopefully stated correctly up here. The last thing is to determine whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. Now, kinetic energy is conserved in elastic collisions. And if you remember the kinetic energy equation, you could really use that to, to answer this. You could say 1 half m v squared plus 1 half m v squared equals 1 half m v squared, right now that we know this v, plus 1 half m v squared. You know all the masses and all the velocities. And so you really could do an energy budget over here and just calculate the initial kinetic energy and see if it equals the final kinetic energy, the sum of them. But as I mentioned, sometimes it's easier to just use this idea of relative speed of approach. We can just kind of look at their velocities. The relative speed of approach, when two objects are moving in opposite directions, which is the case here, we add their speeds to calculate the relative speed. It's how fast do the objects see each other. If two cars pass by each other on the interstate, one going 70 miles per hour north, one going 70 miles per hour south, they will see each other at 140 miles per hour. You know, as one speeds towards the other one, the other one is, is likewise speeding towards it. And so they see each other with the sum of their individual speeds. That's the relative speed. For this example, it's 4.8, 3.6 plus 1.2. After the collision, they travel in the same direction. Same, subtract. When objects travel in the same direction, subtract their speeds to calculate the relative speed. So I subtract here to get the relative speed of separation. This is like if somebody passes you at 75 and you're going 70, it only appears that they pass you at five miles per hour, right? The difference between your respective speeds because you're going in the same direction, right? You're kind of keeping up with at least 70 miles per hour if they're, if they're increasing this list. And because these two are not equal, right? So when we subtract 2.1 from three, we get a relative speed of separation of 0.9. Because these are not equal, we can conclude that it is an inelastic collision. These numbers would have to be equal for it to be considered elastic. And again, the, the kinetic energy calculation is a bit more cumbersome because it's, you know, one half mv squared, but that would work too. That's a perfectly reasonable way to go about answering this, determining whether it's elastic or not. Remember, this comes from the fact that kinetic energy is conserved by definition in a perfectly elastic collision. And so that's what's worked out on the chalkboard over there. You can see I've got momentum conservation, I've got kinetic energy conserved, and I combine those equations together to give us this idea, relative speed of approach equals relative speed of separation. So once you kind of know that and are comfortable with that, this is oftentimes the easier way to deduce whether or not a collision is elastic or inelastic, rather than doing the full-blown sort of kinetic energy calculation. And so that's the practice quiz. Your actual quiz is um, online in the quiz folder under the resources tab on this class's webpage.